and we'll bring up Lori and Julia. And then we'll move into the breakout sessions. Um, so to start with, you should have a goal in mind. You should know what your goals are. And this might be a number of things. We were talking just a few minutes ago before the session started. Um, some of you might be here thinking about seeking out mentors because you're looking for another job. But that's not the only reason. Some of you are here because you're thinking about what your future steps might be. Or you might be thinking about developing a new skill. Or as Mark mentioned, maybe you have a problem you want to talk through with someone. But it's important to think about what your goal is. Um, we're not going to talk in detail about setting goals and identifying goals, but we do have, we always have to put in a plug, we do have a series of workshops, the Career Discovery Series, and there's a brochure on the back table to get some more information about that. The whole workshop to cover setting goals. So once you have your goal in mind, we're going to do a, a quick exercise here. Um, you need to think about what resources you already have. So you, you can close your eyes if you want to, or you can leave them open. Um, but I want you to imagine you're sitting at a big conference table. You're sitting at the head of the table. Sitting around the table is your personal board of directors. These are all the people who are there to support you and help you in your career. And you'll have a variety of people around that table. Maybe you have your current supervisor, some former supervisors, some colleagues. Maybe you have people who aren't associated with your work life at all. On my board of directors, my mom is on my board. If I ever have an ethical issue I need to talk through, she's the one I go to. She's excellent at working through those kinds of problems. So you have a variety of people on your board, and they're all there to help you with different kinds of things. So one of the things to think about is where are there gaps on your board? There might be some areas where you don't know somebody. Maybe you're going to make a career transition. You don't know anybody in that new field. Or maybe you found you have a problem to solve, and you need somebody with a specific kind of information. So those are the gaps that you need to fill in on your board, and that will help guide the process of seeking out a mentor, seeking out someone to talk with. About these gaps. Since we don't know what we don't know, it's important that you think about how can individuals who are existing on my board of directors help guide me to other individuals who might help fill in some of that skill set or skill, fill in rather some of the networking or relationships that I need to get closer to the information or to the people that I'm seeking. So you want to think strategically about who can I go to and inform them of what it is I'm looking for and ask them for their guidance so that they can help point me in the right direction. It's important that if you're operating from a place where you don't know something, just start from scratch and cold call and cold call chances are you may be missing a whole level of information or a whole variety of individuals who already have existing knowledge. And you can, you know, do not pass go, what is it, collect $200. Make it easy on yourself by asking the people who are in those areas to guide you to people they may already know. The other thing to think about is to manage your expectations about what these relationships are going to entail. A board of directors, their capacity is to advise. So at the end of the day, you're still responsible for generating your own results. It's important that that's a relationship. And what that means is you can't go in expecting that you're going to have an ask at all times. Could you please point me in the direction of so-and-so? Could you please tell me what I need to do to get into this position? At some point, you need to contribute value to that relationship as well. This should not be a one-time uh, opportunity where you're going to meet with somebody and never connect with them again. In fact, there may be something that they go over with you that spawns an idea when you're reading an article in the LA Times that four months down the road you might want to send them an email following up and say, you know, I saw this and it reminded me of our conversation and I was thinking of you. So it's important you look at this as a reciprocal opportunity to develop long-term relationships with people. The other thing that's important is to manage your expectations. Today is about informational interviewing. So informational interviewing is different than job interviewing. It doesn't mean that these relationships might not eventually lead to another employment opportunity for you, but the idea is that you're gathering information about somebody else. So you don't want to go in gunning for an opportunity, you know, breaking out your resume the first minute you sit down with somebody. 
uh, because it, frankly, it feels inauthentic and it feels as though you're out to sell something, right? You don't want to come off in a way that people feel uncomfortable. And you want to give people an opportunity to be able to be in a position to say yes. So the reality is they may not have an opportunity in the field or area of your interest right then. But we know that a lot of opportunities come from a hidden job market, meaning that people develop relationships and start thinking about what it is that you excel in and where that might align with the organizational need. And it might take a long time for that to progress into an actual opportunity. If you go in right away expecting that opportunity, you may get the hard no and not have a way to continue that relationship over time. So it's important you manage those expectations. A mentor is, as Lori said, it's a relationship that builds up over a long period of time. It's not something where you're going to set a meeting with somebody, you're going to go in once, and they're going to be giving you lots of advice and information. Still, those are important contacts. The informational interviews, having a contact, going in and getting some information. Over time, that might build into a mentor relationship, somebody that's going to give you a lot of guidance and advice. It's important to understand, though, that that's different from a sponsor. A sponsor is somebody that's going to be your advocate, that will write job references for you, that will um, perhaps let you know about opportunities. Here's a great opportunity for you. I think you should apply. Or they will be the one to say great things about you to other people. Your mentor is not necessarily going to be a sponsor. So don't have those expectations going in. Know clearly what the relationship is about going back to your goals, and think about how over time, eventually, you may get to that point. So you have the fortunate situation of the friends of training here in the room. <laughs> um, these people are here specifically because they have a consistent pattern of graciously saying yes whenever people ask for information and truly wholeheartedly believe in supporting people's development. That being said, it's important that you're clear with the people, whether it's our distinguished panel or other people on this campus, so that they know what it is you're asking from them. And one of uh, the resources I love to point people in the direction of that's available online is actually the career guide that the UCLA Career Center uh, produces for students every year. And in it, you can find it if you Google it on the UCLA page. In it, you'll find a couple of sample scripts for how to go about requesting an informational interview. And you'll find a script for a telephonic request, and you'll find a script for an email request. Now again, this publication is created for students, so you may have to do some modifying of the language. But you'll notice in both cases, they're very brief. You're introducing yourself. Ideally, it's helpful to drop a name, connect people. How did you find out about this individual? Who sent you to them? And then specifically, you want to be very clear that you are not seeking a job from this individual at this time. Remember, we want to give people an opportunity to say yes. So if they didn't have a job, we don't want to close the door on any opportunity to learn from this individual. So my name's Lori firestone Seidelman. I was referred to you by Julia Sanchez. As I'm exploring further career interests across the university, I'd love to uh, take 25 to 30 minutes of your time to learn more about the field of student services. And close are a few questions that we could discuss further. If, for example, you want to front load them with some information, you could do that. Um, here are some potential dates and times that work for me. I look forward to hearing from you. So notice that I am telling them up front who I am, how I heard of them, what it is I'm exploring, what it is I'm not looking for. Remember, I expressly stated I am not looking for a position from you at this time. And I've given them a very clear expectation about how much time I'm seeking to do that. That being said, I would include an hour of your time on your calendar. People like to talk about themselves. So <laughs> add a little cush time on either side. Um, the other important thing, again, once you've clarified your goals, is to go in prepared. This may be an informational interview, but it could, in fact, lead to a real job interview down the line. So you still want to prepare as if. Yes, you may want to have your resume readily available, but again, I wouldn't offer it if the opportunity didn't present itself. I also would dress as though you were going on an interview. Keep in mind, however, if you ask some questions about that person's environment, if they're in a uniformed environment on campus, to show up dressed in a suit might be a bit off-putting. So it's important that you do some homework about the culture there and find out how you can best fit in. So you've clarified what it is you want, 
you've gone about requesting it, then you want to create some sample questions. At the end of this event, we will send you some informational interview guidelines via email. And in that, you'll see a list of sample questions that you can ask. The two things that I think are the most important, um, well, not necessarily two, um, the, the questions can really fall across a variety of different areas. For example, sometimes you want to know what is a day in the life, if there is such a thing anymore, look like in this type of work environment. For others, you may be wanting to know what type of growth can you expect over time in this field? Or what kinds of challenges are you facing right now in your organization? Some of you may be on the precipice of thinking about grad school. Maybe you want to know about the return on investment. So how valuable would an advanced degree be in this particular field? Are there professional organizations I should join? Um, things of that nature. Any events that you can um, think of that might be helpful for me to attend in the next few months to get more familiar. And I think the most important thing that you can ask is who else should I connect with? Remember, the goal of networking is to add to that board of directors. So if you have people who are already experts in their field, then you want to be able to tap in to all the professionals that they already know of. And certainly, um, you want, again, to dress to impress and prepare ahead of time. So we'll send you those questions so that you have them. And they're yours for the modifying, but they'll give you a good starting place. We want to thank people. Send people a thank you for taking the time to meet with you. So it doesn't need to be long. The email is fine. Send a nice thank you. appreciate you taking the time to meet with me. And maybe suggest something that's useful that you're going to take advantage of from your talk. Also, you'll want to follow up with them later. The, the one thing I don't like, Lori and I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one career coaching, and sometimes it's people who come back over and over again. The one thing I don't like is the person who comes in once, and then I never hear from them again. I don't know how things are going. I love it when I get an email, and maybe it's months later, and they say they've, they've put something into action. They met somebody that I suggested. They read a book that I recommended, or they took some steps, and they told me what happened. So make sure you take those opportunities to follow up also. If you're interested in developing a longer term relationship with someone, that's a great way to start. So following up with things, and then Lori mentioned, when you see things that you think that person might be interested in, send that along too. So stay in contact. Um, I mentioned Lori and I do one-on-one -on -one career coaching. We'll, we'll put our cards in the back in case you uh, have questions. It is a great free work resource that the university provides for you. And uh, that's the end of our tips here. I don't know if we could take a couple of questions or if we save those for the breakouts. Maybe we'll just save those for the breakouts. Does that sound? Okay. As, as we transition to the breakouts, though, feel free to catch